everyone. My name is Vinay. Today's topic is about IBM Curator Network Insights, leaving nowhere to hide. Uh, we have two speakers today, Prabir and Bubai. Let me introduce them. Bubai is currently serving as the squad lead for the threat management security team in the APAC region. Prabir is working as a product lead architect in IBM India Software Labs. Now I'd like to hand over to Prabir, who will take you through the demonstration. So as Bubai has already mentioned, we have different inspection levels in Curator Network Insights. Based on various inspection level, you'll have, you know, you'll get different kind of flow properties. Uh, we'll see about that. So basically there are three categories for inspection levels, basic, raised, and advanced. Basic is something like uh, pretty much equivalent to your queue flow, what you get, very basic information. And raised, you'll get more flow properties based on the, you know, layer seven vis visibility of the data. And then advanced level, you could see uh, PI information, confidential data, embedded scripts, all of that. So going forward, how how do you configure, you know, how do you configure the inspection level in Curator? For the curator network site. So if you see that, once you open up the system settings on the admin tab, you will have a curator network inside settings, as you can see on the left pane, right? Now that will come if you have a network inside appliance installed in your deployment. So once you have that, you can see there is a flow inspection level currently set to advanced. And if you click on that drop down menu, you will see three different uh, inspection level. First is basic. Second is enriched and third is advanced. Okay. Based on the requirement or based on the settings of the flow inspection level, uh, the amount of data that gets extracted from the capture traffic differs. So eventually the amount of stories that you have or that you're going to size for Q and I, it also depends on the flow inspection level. Because if you are putting it in a basic mode, the storage consumption will be way more lesser than enriched or advanced. And if you're putting it in enriched mode, it will take up more storage than basic and advanced will obviously take more space than both of basic and enriched combined. And you can also set the maximum raw payload size if you want to capture that so that you can adjust using this configuration settings. So once you have that default is 64 bytes, once you have that, you can click on save and you'll have to do a deploy change. Okay. And once you do the deploy change, Q and I based on the traffic, right? So as you saw in the previous slides, Q and I is a point to point tapping devices, right? So you directly tap into your span port or mirror port of the master switch, which are probably seeing all of the data. And this is best if you, you you're going to get the best value out of it if you're actually forwarding the decrypted traffic. Probably if you have SSL offloader in your network, all of the traffic is being fed to the SSL offloader and then you're getting it out of the SSL offloader, the plain simple traffic. Those informations are probably get fed into QNI so that you know QNI can see most of the data. Like in this case, if you see, this is SSL communication, all right? Now, if this is SSL communication, you are seeing the traffic or the file name probably a certificate server.crt if you can see. Now that file is a certificate file and you can see the size of the file also. You can see the hash hash of the file also, right? And in Curator, you already know you'll have thread fits enabled. You can get malicious hashes also from Xforce Exchange or various third party, you know, a threat intelligence provider, TI provider. If you have that, you can get that also, right? But by default, you get the Xforce exchange, IBM Xforce. So from there, you can get this kind of malicious hashes that you can readily compare in real time against these files that you're getting or that is being communicated over to the network. Anything that Q and I can see or that sw your switches, you're tapping into the master switches, all of the communication is actually getting through those master switches and those traffic are being sent to the SSL offloader or probably if you do not have an SSL offloader also, you know, the first, whatever the file is uh, getting communicated that if it can see that if it is not encrypted, then also you'll be able to see those values. If you're feeding it with the decrypted traffic, then you'll get the most 
value out of it. Now, in this case, let's say file, you can see a lot of, lot of enraged information because we have set the inspection level to advanced. You can see a lot of information, all of the certificate extensions, alternative names and signatures, public key, algorithm, cipher suite, a lot of things. So this information that is available. Another thing that you can do once you have the QNI appliance installed to get all of these flow properties. These are basically the flow properties, right? I'll show you another thing which you can probably do once you have the QNI installed is that, let me share another screen, is this. Uh, go to the app exchange, exchange.exforce.ibmcloud.com slash hub. That would take you to the app exchange platform. Just type QNI, I created a network inside, short for QNI. So if you see that these content packs provides 20 rules, custom rules. It provides 20 custom rules, six reference data collection. Okay, four different kind of reports. All right, so you have readily available rules and then 19 equipment uh, entries. So once you have this content pack installed, right? So you'll have, you'll see a lot more information in the rule dialog box, okay? So this rule will be probably, you know, like this one. If you can see suspicious website access, access to improperly secured devices, file extension, based on the, you know, if you have, if you have a company policy that, oh, .exe or, you know, torrent file or something like that, those kind of, you know, information or applications cannot be used. Even if someone is using, even if someone is able to find some loophole and trying to use it, obviously it is going to be communicated over the network. They will try to access something. And then since you are actually tapping the master suite, which sees all of those traffic within the network. So eventually your q &A will be able to know that. And if q &A sees it, it will detect and let you alert about it. But for that, you'll have to have a rule in place. Okay. Let's see, you know, how to create the rule using flow properties. So once you have that, once you have the rule, so all of the, that will be seen in the network activity tab. Once you click on the network activity tab, you will see all of those network packets coming into, or the flows coming into Curator, right? So if that happens, then based on any properties that we see, you can create a reference set put those value into the reference set, you know, all these values that we are seeing, all of these values. Let's say, let's, for an example, file name, okay, server.crc. We'll go to, you know, reference set management and then create one reference set, all right? So let's say suspicious flow properties, okay? We'll create a new reference set, suspicious flow properties and add the value of the file name, which is server.crt. So once you add that server.crt file, Whatever QNI is actually doing, it's real time. Okay, so you have to add the elements. Here you'll have to write server.crt, adding the data into the reference set. This is how you do it. Okay, added. Now we'll go to rules, and rules will create a new flow rule. Okay, remember you have to create a flow rule because we are testing the flow properties, not the event properties. Okay, so just Click refer and you'll see, you know, a lot of flow related condition, test condition. So we'll apply, we'll give it a name, suspicious flow properties. That would be the name of the rule. And when any of these flow properties and for those flow properties, we'll say file name because file name is the property name, which we are going to test are contained in any of these reference sets. So here we'll say suspicious flow properties, which is the name of the reference set we created because this reference set contains the file name server.crt. So once you do that, click add and click submit. Okay, and click next. Once we are in the rule page or the response page, click on ensure the detected flow is a part of offense and click next. So this will be the rule summary. Rule summary, what it says, apply the suspicious flow properties. That would be the rule name on flows, meaning you are creating a flow rule. If you see apply suspicious flow properties on events, that would be a wrong rule because it will never trigger because you are, you know, probably you will not see those conditions also coming out if you're trying to click on create an event rule to test the flow properties, right? So to test the flow properties, you need to create a flow rule. So once you do that, click on finish. And once you have the rule place, rule in place, and then it is enabled, okay, QNI 
uh, will be getting the flows, okay, and the CRA engine in the real time will keep on testing all those flows. Those are coming into the Q and A, all right. And then after some time, if you go to the offenses tab, you will see something like this: one of the offense, okay. Let's open it up and see what it is showing. Okay, so this is how it looks like. And if you go to the flows that is attached to the offense, so we'll see this is the last 10 flows. Okay, so if we go to one of the flows and then check if our rule is working correctly or not, just click on that. And if you if you see the file name, okay, it contains server.crt. Okay, so it is working perfectly fine. So we saw how it works based on the flow inspection level this flow information all of these that you are seeing right these are flow information the amount of flow information differs based on the configuration that you do on the flow inspection level if you if you leave it in a basic mode then you will not see all of this information okay if you leave it in an enriched mode probably you will see a little much information a more information than basic but not all of it and advanced level will give you the highest number of enriched information or flow information. Okay. And also it depends how much uh, it, it will also depend on the retention. Okay. You'll have to, you'll have to consider your compliance uh, policy also. Let's say uh, if your compliance policy says, okay, we need to store the flows for, you know, six months. Now, six months storing of flow is okay. If you're keeping it in a basic level, maybe the let's say you have 100 tb okay now 100 tb could be there is an appliance which will give you 100 tb and then if you're keeping in the basic level okay then probably you know six months could be this is hypothetical purely hypothetical i'm just giving you an example all right now it depends because you are doing a tapping point when tapping to your network master switch or a aggregator the outbound the throughput from the switches or the aggregator will decide you know the how much i if the current storage that you're having in the QNR network inside how much for how many period or how longer you're going to sustain the amount of data that you're getting so if it is uh, if the throughput is 1 gb from your master switch right probably it would be okay to store for 6 months 7 months right so that you need to prepare something before you know onboarding the q &A. so there is something the sizing guide is available that you can refer to or uh, it's also available in the q &I official uh, guide that is available publicly all right so with this we have come to an end